good evening everybody good good evening to another session of ashtanga webinar series uh, welcome uh, to ashtanga webinar series which has been going on for the last two years now uh, the concept of agni uh, this time the topic is on agni the concept of agni is a fund is fundamental to the ayurvedic tradition and regarded as a very source of life as metabolism constantly provides the body with energy for essential body functions like breathing and digestion even more importantly ayurveda teaches us that all imbalance and diseases originate from an agni that is hindered unhindered this uh, thus it is impo impossible to overstate the significance of agni in ayurveda so to, uh, today's speaker is dr yadu gopan assistant professor department of kaya chikitsa and uh, consultant paralysis of opd at sdm college of ayurveda and hospital hasan the same uh, place where i have also done my ug as well as post graduation uh, i have been uh, lucky enough to know dr yadu gopan during my post graduation days uh, dr yadu gopan is a kaya chikitsa specialist working as a consultant in the pa paralysis opd he is also an assistant professor in the department of kaya chikitsa he is currently pursuing P phd in kaya chikitsa at sdm college of ayurveda he has published a lot of scientific papers in various journals so uh, i would like to welcome dr yadu gopan uh, wholeheartedly to this program welcome dr thank you thank you so much sir uh, before uh, going on to the program i would want to uh, ask uh, the executive director of ks varias ashtanga ayurvedic uh, mr t r shashi varias to give a brief introduction on ashtanga thank you very much dr girish for handing over this mic to me i'm glad i'm glad that i'm here today in the evening uh, listening to going to listen to dr yadu gopan on agni the concept of digestion the concept of metabolism i have always been wondering about metabolism in our body and it's such a lovely topic to have and uh, we are going to we are expecting a lot from you dr gopan uh, yes talking about my company ks varias ashtanga ayurvedic private limited was started in the year 1936 by my grandfather dr girish's great grandfather dr ks varia Dr. K. S. Varya studied in Protocol College uh, in the during the year 1933 and completed his course in 1930. Uh, sorry, completed his course in 1933. He uh, studied from 1927 to 1933 in Protocol. Later, he joined. Uh, he came to Trichy under the advice of uh, P. S. Varya, uh, his own mentor, and he started practicing here in Trichy. while starting to practice here in trichy he started uh, uh, he, he he had difficulties getting medicines from cortexil and then under the advice from ps warrior himself he started manufacturing medicines in the year 1936 so the company ashtanga ayurvedics was started in 1936 and uh, it continued till today 86 years he has uh, done a massive job in making the company making the family aware of what ayurveda is and making the family follow this tradition and uh, uh, bringing in the fourth generation to the uh, practice of ayurveda which is a, a great science it is a great service to the society uh, dr k s varier has uh, gone through a lot of difficulties during the premier years of his uh, starting and he has Uh, later years he has even treated animals like the elephant uh, of the temple the 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 rockford temple which he the elephant had cancer and he treated the animal for cancer uh, the animal was uh, destined to die in two months which was changed by dr k s varier after his medication and the elephant died for his, uh, after two years from then uh, For, uh, under uh, uh, in a year uh, in a disease which was not cancer so that was the kind of treatment that he used to give a very humble person uh, he dedicated this science to us and uh, to chiaids and we have grown all the while we now produce about 400 plus products in our factory here in trichy we supply to all over tamil nadu karnataka kerala we are uh, we are yet to expand to andhra which will happen in a short while so this is the history of ks varias ashtanga ayurvedic private limited we also have our uh, uh, chief uh, medical officer dr tvn varier here who is the son of ks varier 
He will come to you later with his own comments. So over to Dr. Girish for furthering this program. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for that wonderful uh, introduction to Ashtanga. Uh, Dr. Yadu, uh, can you please come on video and say hi to everybody? Uh, Dr. Yadu has some issues uh, technically on the internet side. So uh, that is why he's, uh, uh, he might be during the session also, he would be concentrating on the slides more than coming on video. So it'll be available on audio. Is that right, Dr. Yadu? I'm not, uh, you're on mute, uh, doctor. Okay, am I audible now? Yes, 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 doctor. So uh, okay. you're very clear and audible. Uh, so once uh, the presentation starts, uh, uh, I, I request all of you to go on mute. And uh, if there are any questions, please put it in the chat box. We'll discuss the questions at the end of the session. Uh, at the end of the session, if you directly want to ask Dr. Yadu Gopan any questions also, that is also possible. Uh, so uh, with that, without much further ado, I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Yadu to please uh, take over the stage. Dr. Yadu, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the welcome. And I'd, I'm really you know, thankful to the coordinators of this uh, webinar. So it's... Uh, uh, really great to be here and uh, and this is uh, one of my first uh, webinar where i'm talking to the public more more than the ayurvedic fraternity so i i try uh, my maximum to explain in the common language which we can you know uh, in which i can explain the uh, concept to the uh, common people also so i'd like to share my ppt now yes please Is it audible now? Is it visible now? Yes, sir. Visible, sir. Okay, okay. Thank you. So, can it start the session? Yes, please. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. So, um, my topic of presentation today is Ayurveda, Agni, and Arogya. So, as, uh, uh, as, as told it's like agni is one of the most basic and fundamental uh, things in ayurveda where we can say almost all the uh, concepts in ayurveda or the whatever things we discuss about the diseases in ayurveda or the treatments in ayurveda everything evolves around agni so agni is one of the most important and basic uh, principles in ayurveda we can say and uh, myself being a person from the department of kaya chikilsa so i like to explain the you know definition of kaya chikilsa to the common people also like kaya chikilsa is uh, you know uh, it's a uh, the definition of kaya chikilsa is kaya si andaragni chikilsa kaya chikilsa that means kaya means the sharira or the body physical body and the andaragni whatever agni is there in the sharira inner uh, part of the sharira and treating that agni, that is kaya chikilsa. So the ultimate aim of kaya chikilsa is to maintain or to normalize the agni. So why we have to normalize the agni or what all things can happen to agni or what is the importance of agni or what all things are uh, now provided by the agni. Uh, so all these are again generally, uh, I'll you know, uh, explain all these things uh, in the coming slides. So uh, first thing is to uh, know, uh, know what is agni or what is the function of Agni? What is the importance of having a good Agni? So Agni, generally, we know the word meaning of Agni is, uh, uh, this is that's nothing but the uh, fire. Generally, we can, uh, in layman term, we can, uh, we can uh, call it as a fire. So universally, in the universe, we have the Agni that is a fire. So fire is able to digest everything or it can burn anything. So uh, again, uh, if, uh, no. So in a, like in a, generally we can say like whenever, a, for example, a building gets fire. So we try to extinguish that fire. But that if, if we are not able to you know, extinguish that fire, it will burn the complete building or it will, it will make so much low, you know, uh, it will destroy everything. So in that manner, we have in our body, we have, there is a fire in our uh, body. So that fire is actually needed to us. So generally we have so much use of, uh, use with the fire. So likewise, our body also needs fire for its normal functioning, normal metabolism, whatever normal activities in the uh, body, everything can be done. You know, the Agni has a role in that. So that is the thing which Ayurveda explains. Uh, so and Ayurveda uh, divides Agni into uh, fire into three. We have three types of fire. That is Jatara Agni, that's a base or base Agni, the most important type of Agni which stays in the Koshta, that's in the, in the you know, our, you know, uh, food uh, tract or where we can say like you know, the place where the actual digestion occurs. 
there stays the maybe generally we can say in the stomach there stays the agni uh, and again another type of agni is the dhatu agni there are seven dhatu means again according to ayurveda there are seven dhatus are there our body is made up of seven type of tissues ten seven types of tissues for each tissue each an nourishment of each tissue we have different you know, seven types of agni for example the tissues like rasa rakta just like in modern uh, generally in uh, anatomy we have the tissues like blood or the skin or the bone or the bone marrow likewise in ayurveda also we have seven types of tissues and for e- nourishment of each tissue or metabolism of each tissue for the nourishment of the sharira we have seven types of agni that is nothing but the dhatu agni and again we have bhuta agni pancha mahabhuta agni so we know the generally we know the pancha bhuta agni pancha bhutas we know pancha mahabhutas like akasha agni vayu all those things we have so for that also have different you no know, some role in the metabolism of the sharira or the nourishment of the sharira so based on that again agni is classified into another five types that is a panchabhuta agni so out of these three classification most important type of agni or the uh, no section of agni is nothing but the jataragni which stays in the kosha or in the sharira within the sharira where that is a base for digestion so that is so ultimately our aim that is a person who is from a kaya chikitsa department or the intention of kaya chikitsa department uh, it is to maintain the agni or keep the agni in a normalcy so this shloka this is taken from sushruta samhita one of the most classical textbooks of ayurveda it explains like this that is samadosha samagnishcha samadhatu malakriya prasanna atmendriya manaha swastha ityabidhi so this is the definition of health by in ayurveda that is by sushruta acharya definition of health totally how can you call a person as healthy so a person who is having no disease cannot be called as healthy always because according to ayurveda the doshas should be in normal see in the samavastha dosha is nothing but the tridoshas the basic another basic concept of ayurveda vata pitta and kapha that should be in the normal see then sama agni so here comes the agni again that is agni should be in it. sama means again in normal see or the optimum level sama dhatu dhatu means a tissues that is a uh seven tissue should be in its own normal see and again the malakriya all the you know excretory uh mechanisms like you know different you know elimination of the bodily waste that is like you know in the form of urine or the fecal matter or sweat that should be in the normal no, so all these function should happen in normal see that is dosha should be in the vata pitta and kapha should be in normal see agni should be in normal see and the tissue should be in normal see and the excretion the you know excretion of the bodily waste that should also be in normal see and not only this one so this is about the physical physical uh, you know well being and next is the prasanna atma prasanna atma and prasanna indriya prasanna mana that's all our sense organs should be in normal see all our uh, you know uh, our soul totally our soul should be in normal see and the mind ultimately the mind should be in normal see so then only we can call a person as healthy not just if a person is not having a disease he is not healthy because he should have all these things in the normal see or in the optimum level that is the dosha dhatu mala agni and again the atma indriya and mana should be normal see then only we can call a person as healthy according to ayurveda so here also we have the role of agni that is agni is also one among the most important factor to call a person as healthy so what is the role of agni in the sharira so how we can call uh, how much important is agni in sharira so this shloka is taken from uh, charaka samhita uh, so in charaka samhita while explaining the different types of agni before going to the role of agni in sharira he explains the importance of agni or what are the functions of agni see from this shloka it may be difficult for you to read the shloka but again i'll explain the meaning that is ayur varna balam swasyam utsaha upachayo prabha ojas tejo agneha prana shokta dehaagni hetka that is agni provides almost all the most important most vital functions in the sharira or the vital factors in the sharira that is ayu itself ayu means the life our life is provided by the agni and varna that is a complexion skin complexion is provided by the agni bala that is a strength of the body is provided by the agni then swasthya that is the arogya or health is provided by the agni utsaha the enthusiasm or the activeness to do any activities that is given by the agni upachaya is nothing but the metabolism 
So the met all the metabolism in the sharia, whatever metabolic, anabolic, or catabolic activities happening in the sharia, everything is done by the agni. And again, prabha, that's the luster, you know, you know, luster of the um, uh, sharia that is given by the agni. And ojas, ultimately, the immunity or the defense mechanism or the total health of the sharia. That is everything is given by the Agni and the Teja or the power, ultimately the power that is also again given by the Agni. So Agni is very much important because here we can see by seeing these words, we can see almost all the total activities of the Sharira or the total well-being of Sharira, everything is in included in these sentences. So totally we can say Agni provides Agni everything. So Agni is responsible for having these uh, you know, uh, normal bodily functions. So these are these things are told in the first two, uh, uh, first two uh, you know, lines, first two lines of the shloka, and next third line it's about the abnormality of agni. If agni is not normal, if agni is not uh, you know, in the optimum level, what all things can happen? That is the first thing is told. Shanti atna umriyate. That is if agni is shanti, agni shanti occurs. See, generally we call, talk about this shanti or again uh, as a normal word. That is again like for example like uh, about a well-being. Like Om Shanti will tell, uh, no, uh, mantras will tell. So shanti here means it is not about the normalcy. Agni shanti is nothing but the loss of agni. If agni is completely you know, extinguished or it is lost in the sharira, then mriyate. Mriyate means the person is going to die. So Agni Shanti, if it occurs, or the loss of Agni is lost, then the person is going to die. And again, next thing, that is Yukte Chiram Jivayati Anamaya. That is, if Agni is Yukta, that is Agni, Agni is normal, or it is in the optimum level, then the person is going to leave for uh, uh, Chiram Jivayati. That is, the person is going to leave for longer years, maybe for 100 years, without any disease. So that is the Yukte uh, Chiram If Agni is good or it's in the optimum level, person is going to live for so many years. And third thing is the most important thing, that is a Rogi Syad Vikrate. So if Agni is in the Vikrata Avastha, Vikrata means what? So we are Ayurveda, we have two terms, that is Prakriti and Vikrati. Prakriti means the normalcy or the natural thing, that is a normalcy. Vikrati means something which is opposite to that or any alteration from the normalcy of anything that is the vikrati vikrati means here it is uh, nothing but the uh, abnormality or any abnormality of agni and that is going to produce roga or rogi so if if in a person of a, so in the body of a person if agni is not in the normalcy if it is in the vikrata avastha then that person is going to become rogi or the diseased person or that person is going to have some illness or some diseases in his sharira so the, all these things are the you know um, functions of agni in the sharia. So first two lines explains about the what all normal uh, functions are uh, there in the uh, sharia which are done by the agni. Almost all the bodily functions are you know given by the uh, agni. And if agni shanti or loss of agni occurs, person is going to die. And again, yukte chiram jivayati anamiyaha. That is, if a person is having the normal Agni, optimum Agni, he is going to live for so many years. And if Agni Vikrati occurs, any alteration in the Agni occurs, then the person will be having uh, disease or the person is going to become diseased. So this is the thing which is, uh, you know, uh, told by uh, Acharya Charaka. So here, since we are talking more about the disease and its treatment or the health itself, the one of, uh, out of these three things, that is Agni Shanti, Yukta Agni and third one is Vikrata uh, Agni. We have to give more concentration about the Vikrata Agni, where we are going to discuss, discuss about the diseases, how the diseases are going to occur from the Agni. So before going to that, I would like to say that that is again, we can't see the Agni in the Sharira. So it's a concept. As per Ayurveda, Agni resides in the Sharira, but we can't see the Agni directly. Just like in the allopathy, after doing the dissection or after doing the surgery, opening the abdomen, we, they, they, they you know, explain each and every organ. So likewise, we can't see the Agni in the Sharira. So Agni is, Agni is a concept which or a factor which is there in the Sharira by the activities, by seeing the Ayu or by seeing the Bala or by seeing the Varna or the Swastya, that is again the health, power or the bodily strength or defense mechanism. By seeing this, we can assess that our Agni is in the normal sea. But we can't see the Agni just by seeing the expressions or bodily expressions of these functions 
if these functions are in its normalcy or in the you know good level or in the you know best best optimum level then we can understand that our agni is in the normalcy agni is functioning normally so any deformity or any abnormality to that agni is considered to be the vigrada agni so now we are going to discuss more about the vigrada agni so vigrada agni can be in three ways so in three ways we can have the agni vikara or agni vigrudi or any deformity in the agni or abnormality in the agni can be in three ways so first one is known as a manda agni second one is the tishna agni and the third one is the vishama agni so manda means generally in the you know in our local languages also manda means something which is slow or which is less less than the normalcy so if the agni is very less than in the normal level it is considered to be agni mandya or manda agni that is a loss or the less hypometabolism we can generally uh, you know in medical terms we can translate like that but in general terms we can call that is a again the digestion is there is a lack of digestion generally for general understanding i am telling that is lack of uh, digestion or reduced digestion next is a tikshna agni tikshna means again something which is uh, you know greater or some intense intensive so uh, or you know very much powerful so that is agni is very much powerful that is again not normal normal means there is a normal level of agni but it is beyond that that is agni is more you know like in you know, a hyper metabolism very you know uh, agni, the level of agni is very high so that just like you can see for you now uh, uh, like i uh, i explain uh, first just like the you now uh, this uh, when a building gets fire that is not not normal fire that is something fire is very much you know big or large that it is able to digest you know it is able to destroy the whole building so likewise in the sharira if the agni is very much more or very high then it is also not normal it can also lead to some uh, diseases third thing is the vishama agni vishama means again generally we can call vishama means uh, no uh, the agni is uh, no sometimes it may be normal or sometimes it may be abnormal sometimes uh, so abnormal in the sense it may be either high or uh, low so that so that uh, vishama agni can be you know generally we can say that is sometimes a person's appetite is very good and so other times it may be very high sometimes it may be very less also so in that manner vishama agni means not you know stable any time the digestive power can change that is nothing but the vishama agni so all these three things that is a manda agni uh, tikshna agni and the third one is the vishama agni these are not uh, physiological these are again pathological or they are going to produce some diseases okay so that is the thing uh, the uh, different types of agni vikaras so here again once again this uh, told the shanti agnirmiya that if the agni shanti loss of agni occurs the person is going to die that is thing that is the thing which is told here so again uh, this is uh, another uh, you know uh, reference from uh, charaka samhita the place of agni where the agni is actually uh, you know uh, located in the sharira so charaka explains like this agni adhisthanam annasya grahanat grahani mata so we have an organ in the sharira which is known as grahani so just like the stomach or the you know intestine so we have a part of that stomach or intestine which is known as the grahani and it is uh, located so that grahani is the seat for agni because all the digestion mechanism occurs in that grahani with the help of agni and it is located nabe rubadiyahi that is again it is located just above the umbilicus so the part of intestine or the part of stomach which comes above the umbilicus is said to be the grahani and that is nothing but the location of the agni or the place of agni and this grahani that organ is nourished by the help of agni so uh, there is is like a give and take mechanism where ag that grahani provides a seat for the agni and in return agni provides the bala and maintenance of the grahani so this is nothing but the uh, uh, no seat of agni and again one more thing about the grahani is so this grahani as an organ it has a main function that is nothing but the uh, apakkum dhareti annam pakkum srujati paashadaha durbala agni bale dushta aamam eva vimunchadi so this shloka so i'll explain the meaning so apakku aahara whatever undigested if you are taking the aahara it should or the food it should generally get digested but if it is not so that digestion is happening by the help of agni and grahani or in the grahani with the help of agni but if it is if there is some indigestion 
So until that food get digested, it should stay in the grahani. So that is a function of grahani. Grahani will hold that ahara or the food till it get digested. And after digestion, uh, a part of that food will go to the nourishment of the tissues. And another part that is a you know, waste part that will be eliminated through the uh, orifices. That is a normal function of uh, grahani. And what is the role of this Agni in this Grahani function is, if Agni Dushti or the Agni, that's Agni Vikara occurs, we already discussed about the abnormality of Agni. For any abnormality in the Agni occurs, then what happens is the normal function of this Grahani will be lost. That is, Grahani is not able to digest the food, not able to hold the undigested food, and not able to nourish the tissues, and not able to eliminate the waste. So all these four functions will be lost if the Bala of Agni is lost. So that's why we have to keep the Agni in the normalcy. Then only all these functions will be taking uh, place. So these things I have already uh, discussed, the types of Agni. So, be, uh, so that, uh, now we will go to the abnormalcy of Agni. How this, so these things will be more practical to you. We, I can explain this in the more practical manner because generally these things are again going to happen in, in our day-to-day -day life. That is, how this Agni? So till now I have explained about what is Agni, where is Agni, and what is the function of Agni, what is the importance of Agni. So generally, once again, I'll you know, conclude that that is again the uh, Agni is one of the most important concepts in Ayurveda. And this Agni stays in the body of a human being. And it has so many roles. So almost all the total bodily functions are provided by the Agni. If Agni is good, our strength will be good. Our digestion will be good. Our health will be good. We will not have any diseases. Our, you know, this uh, bodily defense mechanism or immunity will be good. So ultimately, total well-being of the body will be provided by the Agni. And then we have discussed about the different types of Agni Vikaras or abnormal Agni. That is Mandagni, Vishamagni and Tikshnagni. That is a excessive Agni, very less Agni and, you know, uh, like, you know, Vishamagni is a alternative, you know, ups and downs in the Agni level. So these are the different types of Agni Vikaras which will go, which will be producing the diseases. So ultimately, one more uh, thing is like uh, all these three Vikrita Agnis can produce different types of uh, diseases. As per Ayurveda, as per Charaka Samhita, Agni Dosha and Manushyanam Roga Samya Pradagvida Malavrudhya Pravartande Visheshan Udharanitu. That is again, as per Charaka, Charaka says like uh, Agni Dosha or any Agni Vikara can produce uh, Product with the rogas, different types of diseases. So whatever diseases in the sharira or different types of diseases which we are generally getting. For example, we have diseases like, so Ayurveda again explains different types of diseases. But for your better understanding, I can say, like if you are getting a fever, just a simple fever, as per Ayurveda, it is also occurring as a result of the Agni Vigara or any abnormal Agni. So generally we can say, if you are getting a fever, you may uh, no, you will develop the aversion towards food. Or sometimes you develop, you don't feel like eating food. Or if you're taking the food in the mouth also, you don't feel, you are not able to understand the taste of that food. You will feel like, you know, in a bitter taste in the mouth. Because, and whatever food you are, if, you, if the food is tastier also, you will feel like uh, that doesn't have any taste. Or you generally, you may not like to have the food. Or you will feel like indigestion. So, so there is also involvement of uh, Agni in the fever itself. Or any other such diseases. There can be some, like, for example, like in, in, in diarrhea, not just fever, diarrhea itself. So how this diarrhea occurs means, again, proper digestion is not occurring. As a part of indigestion, it may be eliminated uh, in the form of diarrhea. So that is also, in that disease also, there is the role of Agni. So likewise, in, in different disorders, we can have the role of Agni. That is a different types of abnormality of Agni. So how this abnormality or derangement in the Agni or Agni Vikaras is occurring? For that, again, we have different nidanas. Nidana means the causative factors are there. So these are also, again, from the Charaka Samhita. First nidana is told is abhojana. So bhojana, you know, that is nothing but the food intake. So abhojana means no food intake or not having food. Like, not at all having food. Maybe like, you know, uh, some people are there, like, you know, they, like, you know over fasting they'll do. Maybe in order to reduce their bodily weight or to you know maintain the zero figure, they'll intentionally they'll uh, stop eating. Maybe for some days or, uh, or again some over fasting, or they'll skip a meal. That is, though they are feeling hungry, they'll skip that particular meal. So that is not about not having the food 
or as a part of like we know this hunger strikes and all that yeah, days together the persons are not taking food obviously they are going to have uh, end up in some of the, some of the other complications so abhojana is the thing but not having food that is again that may be due to lack of interest sometimes the people may have no interest in taking food especially we have like you know uh, generally you know like some patients of depression are there depression patients are there some in depression again two types of uh, food intake can be sometimes the people completely leave the food some people have the habit of voracious food eating as a part of depression they'll take more food also so this loss of food intake or lack of food not having food that can occur as a part of different things like uh, as a part of fasting it can occur or lack of interest in food or again uh, sometimes maybe we may be in a rush to run for our duty we may be late to uh, you know uh, uh, to the duty uh, place that time we may not be able to take the food so as a part of that also we generally so these are again uh, commonly we'll skip the meal so that is nothing but the abhojana so not having a food at a proper time can lead to the agni mandya or different types of agni vikara so abnormality of agni Next is Ajirna Bhojana. Ajirna and Bhojana. Bhojana is again the food intake. Ajirna is nothing but the indigestion. If the person is already having indigestion. So generally we will get indigestion. Whenever, for example, if you go for a marriage function, where we will you know, have so many food. So every food, like different sweets will be there. Veg or non-veg food will be there. We will take a lot of food. And next day we may not uh, feel the appetite. We may not feel like uh, you know, having the food in the morning. so as a part of that again you will develop the ajirna or indigestion and otherwise if you have some other diseases like fever and all as a part of the disease also we can develop the indigestion but ajirna bhojana means though the person is having the indigestion still if the person tries to have more food that is having more food during indigestion that can also lead to the more hamper that can also you know do more hamper to the agni or the digestive fire so that is nothing but the ajirna bhojana next is the adhi bhojana that is excessive food intake not considering the agni not considering the appetite level still the person likes to have more food especially like when the person is having the you know every while like, you know he gets more you know whatever food uh, his you know so uh, i know uh, like you know more if the person is having uh, all his desires food if the person is having you know uh, the foods which are liked by him so if he is easily getting such food without considering anything without considering the agni he'll try to have excessive food intake and again that too before the digestion of previous meal uh, you know that is a previous meal for example for the breakfast if a person takes large quantity of food which is very much liked by him and at the lunch time also he is having the same similar food is there many at times what happens is like the uh, may if you are going for some marriage function or any other such functions uh the person will you uh, know think he will be in a rush to have the food because thinking that the food can get over so uh, so uh, by considering that also he will try to have more food with the rush so that is nothing but the ajirna bhojana or sorry adhi bhojana that is again the digestion of the previous meal if the person tries to take food that is the adhi bhojana or ati asana then vishamasana or vishama bhojana that is again this is again no regular pattern of taking food that is sometimes a person can may take very less food and another times he may take very large no large quantity of food more food so that is again uh, vishamasana another thing is many a times what happens is like uh, taking the food before getting the proper hunger that is uh, mainly like in the you know office workers what happens is uh, they will keep a particular time for food intake that is uh, maybe uh, morning 8 o'clock afternoon 1 o'clock and uh, in the night in the again 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock so they will keep the time but many a times in the 8 o'clock morning they may not get the proper hunger still they will have the food because they have that much time only they have to go for the work and afternoon also 1 o'clock though they may not get the hunger they will what they will do is they will have the food because the time is up so he has to have the food so that is nothing but the before getting the proper high, uh, hunger if the person tries to take the food that is the uh, vishamasana and another thing is delaying the food intake there is sometimes many a times if you are traveling or if you are in some busy in some work what happens is though we will get the digestion we will you know we will not take the food we will delay the food intake 
maybe after one hour or two hours we'll take the food so by that time our hunger might have gone uh, it may we may not be feeling no, uh, no more hunger by that time but still we'll take the food uh, you know we'll take uh, we'll delay the food intake okay that is also coming under the vishamashana and again asatmya bhojana non habitual food so this is also very much practical you might have seen like you know when we are you know traveling from one place to the another place uh where we will get you now have different food habits are there for example we uh, many of us are from the south india uh if we are traveling from uh, our place maybe from kerala or tamil nadu to the uh, north indian places so we are habituated to the our type of food like dosa idli or rice items we used to take that more but when you travel to another you know, north indian uh, state there the total food habit or food pattern is different or the food items are different so we may have to uh, adjust with them but it will take a long time for adjusting with such food so that again so these foods satmya means which is something which is habitual to us so that type of food is not habitual to us that is one thing and again within our place the food time pattern or food you uh, know that you know, style can vary in a city and a village so if a person from city goes to a village so in a village place the people are may be taking more spicy food or more you know this uh, you know uh, that is excessive spicy food such food may not be much habitual to the city person he may not be uh, uh, able to you know digest that food or he may not be able to you know withstand the that uh, spiciness of the such food uh, that is also again coming under the uh, this uh, asadmiya bhojana and again if you are completely shifting to an you know uh, abroad and outside the country we, so obviously the totally the food intake will be different or the food pattern will be different so we may have we will have to have some you know time in order to get adjusted to that particular food intakes so that is uh, the thing is again uh, coming under the asatmiya bhojana when we are we have to take the habitual and the non habitual food or the food which is not habitual to us so that is also can, that also can lead to the uh, you know as a, this uh, derangements in the agni level so other than this again the intake of guru ahara is again heavy food like you know biryani for example biryani or again other any like sweets many if you are taking more quantity of sweet these are also guru means again heavy food so not considering our appetite not considering our you know stomach if you are taking more food because that food is very much you know uh, 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 liked by you so that can also lead to the uh, agni mandya or agni uh, dushti and again it intake of more cold food like ice creams or again like generally we have a habit of taking this ice creams in the marriage functions we will take all the heavy meal first then immediately after that as a dessert we have the uh, you know ice creams or fruit salads that is again cold in nature or again cold drinks can be there so this is also again uh, you know cause for the uh, loss of agni and excessively dry fruits like uh, dry uh, foods like uh, this uh, snacks or again any, any such you know this like in you know, pani pani puri or again any other like you know dry uh, like snacks that can also lead to the agni derangement and again from our side like from the doctor side also if any you know improper uh, treatments or medications are given to the patient that is again the in the form of we have ayurveda we have different types of treatments like panchakarma treatments are there like you know this vamana virechana basti like the different types of treatments we have so if the treatments are not done in a proper manner that can also lead to the or if medications are not given in a proper manner without considering the proper uh, all the most important factors then that that can also lead to the uh, that can also have a negative impact over the agni and again the uh suppression of natural urges that is a vega avarodha uh, in ayurveda that is whenever we are getting the urge of passing the urine or the you know uh, uh, mala or the fecal matter uh, defecation then if you are uh, forcefully suppressing that urge because you may not have that you know facility nearby you or you may have some other work so if you are suppressing the natural urges also this agni mandya can occur or agni it can derange the agni okay so these are the causes for the derangement in the Uh, uh, agni that is again uh, how this uh, agni uh, can get hampered so this is this flow chart explains now how this diseases are occurring because of the agni so nidana means that the first red box nidana is nothing but the causative factors whatever we have discussed already uh, already that is nothing but the uh, causative factors uh, to for the agni mandi or the loss of agni or the uh, uh, reduced ag- appetite so agni mandi will occur from agni mandi next thing is nothing but the indigestion or the food will stay in the stomach 
in a stage where it is not digested until it is getting uh, it gets digested it will stay there that is nothing but the ajirna and from ajirna next thing is the ama so ama is a concept uh, it is maybe difficult uh, even for the ayurvedic people also it's a you know most complicated subject it looks very only three letter word is there but it's a complicated subject so for your better understanding i would like to say it's like a from the indigested so undigested if the undigested food stays in the uh, stomach for a long time it can be called as ama because it will act like visha visha in the sense a poison or it can produce different diseases so since this ajirna is it stays in the uh, stomach for a longer time and uh, then it is called as ama where that ama can produce different types of diseases so different types means this ama is a thing which is staying in the uh, you know ama ama say that's in the stomach and we have like different tridoshas are there like vata pitta kapha out of this tridoshas vata is the nothing but the you know thing which can move throughout the sharira throughout the body so this vata can take this ama from the stomach and it can deposit it anywhere in the sharira it can deposit that ama in the chest or in the brain or in the heart or in the you know joints so we, we, according to the place where this ama gets uh, located the diseases can occur there for example the best example i can uh, say like you know if this ama is taken to the joints or the sandhis or the joints then there is a condition called as ama vata like generally we will correlate the rheumatoid arthritis there is a disease called as rheumatoid arthritis where you will get the multiple joint pain so as per ayurveda this is because you know this ama is located it's deposited in that particular joints where you will have the swelling stiffness or pain so likewise ama can move to any other location even in the ama can go to the uh, you know this uh, uh, like you know skin where it produces some skin diseases or even in the you now this uh, the minute pores in the skin where it will obstruct the sweating process and it can lead to the when that you know increased temperature so this uh, like in the form of fever okay so likewise ama once it is produced it can produce different other diseases so this is the basic you know way how this from agni how the diseases are occurring so here i like again uh, agni dosha this is the the word agni dosha is something but the any abnormal state of agni where most common is nothing but the agni mandya or the reduced appetite so so this can lead to various diseases in which ama is an important factor so i already told what is ama that is an i know whenever that undigested food stays in the amashaya that is the stomach for a longer period it can produce uh, different diseases or it can act as a poison there that is nothing but the ama like in an endo endotoxin that is a poison which or the toxin which is produced in the sharira that is nothing but the ama so this ama can move so as per ayurveda we have different channels in the body it's like a different you know networks in the sharira that is known as srotasas and this dhatus or the tissues are flowing through this uh, srotasas so if ama goes to a particular srotas or a particular channel there it can produce the diseases related to that particular tissue for example we have uh, you know blood uh, that is a rakta dhatu or blood as a tissue and uh, if ama goes to that blood or the channel which carries the blood then it can produce different uh, bleeding disorders can be there or different you know anemic anemia as a disorder that can occur so ama because ama is there in the srotas in the, so that channel of the blood okay so different uh, systems in the sharira uh, the bodies can be correlated with srotas so ama can go to any system that is the last sentence we can circulatory system respiratory system or gi system excretory system that is again the uh, you know eliminate waste eliminating system okay circulation means the blood circulation respiratory means the you know breathing or the air uh, gas exchange in the body everything is in the respiratory system gi system gastrointestinal system is nothing but the uh, you know that is nothing but the uh, di- the system which in which the digestion occurs okay so ama can go to any of these uh, systems and produce the diseases of that particular system okay so i'll go to the examples of such uh, diseases best example is the fever so uh, so this may be more uh, you can understand this very clearly that is a, as i already told just a simple fever occurs how that fever occurs in the sharira so as per ayurveda fever is caused by the ama 
or the acute fever or the agni drushti agni and nama is taken to the sweat glands or the strotuses or the channels which through which the sweat is excreted or sweat is eliminated the bodily sweat is again a, in a mala or the waste product in the sharira that should be normally eliminated in which uh, this uh, or it is eliminated then there will be obstruction in that uh, 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 channel so that sweating is not going to occur so as per modern also sweating is a mechanism to reduce the bodily temperature so if at all any obstruction to that occurs body temperature rises because sweat is not able to come out and so that temperature is not transmitted out so that the bodily tem temperature increases along with that uh, the agni so already you told the agni is also from the amash it is taken out of the sharira so that the fever occurs so this is how the fever occurs and again next disease the rheumatoid arthritis so i have enlisted some of the disease examples here rheumatoid arthritis you know the basic feature is nothing but the multiple joint pain especially pain in the very you know, this, you know, small joint smaller joints and stiffness will be there swelling will be there tenderness that is again the uh on touch there will be pain and the temperature will be increase in that particular joint so this many of you might have seen such patients or some of us may be having such diseases where multiple joint pain so ama vata so here also ama is uh, responsible because ama is taken from the amasya again here agni mandya agni is lost because of the uh, causative factors whatever we have already discussed then from that loss of agni ama is produced this ama is taken to the joints here in this particular disease it is taken to the joints and in that joint that ama produces swelling will be there stiffness will be there pain will be there so that is again the rheumatoid arthritis and again coming to the ama atisara that is again acute diarrhea that is a you know loose motion generally will tell that is diarrhea there also ama is in the excretory system ama so whenever that mala is generally the mala should be eliminated so whenever agni mandi is there there is a loss of agni uh, digestion will be there ama is produced and this ama is taken to the excretory system and that is eliminated through the uh, you know fecal matter that is through the defecation so along with the stools there will be ama also so, and this will make the stool foul smelling stools will be there that is a uh, foul smelling stools and again uh, that uh, as per a classical feature is told in ayurveda that is a fecal matter sinks in the water that is again it will be very you know dense because of the ama that will sink in the water it not float over the water and the, there will be reduced appetite will be there so this is nothing but the acute diarrhea and that means there is also involvement of agni and ama and again one more uh, most common disease which is occurring in many of the you know young youngsters also that is ibs irritable bowel syndrome irritable bowel syndrome where the classical feature is some, sometimes there will be you know the loss of appetite can be there and sometimes diarrhea can be there it's again complete uh, that you know general you know more increased frequency of uh, stools will be there or watery stools will be there that is in the ibs and sometimes there can be constipation also that is very hard stools can be there and in some other people both you know alternatively either uh, you know this um, uh, diarrhea or constipation can be there and the people will feel like uh, defecation immediately after food intake so as immediately after the person takes the food he feels like passing the stools that is nothing but uh, ibs so in that condition also ama is there that is agni mandya so we already discussed like uh, the grahani as an organ which is the location for the agni uh, so that the total function of agni is lost and the total function of that grahani is lost grahani uh, grahani uh, no organ so that so that there will be elimination of the uh, undigested food particles through the uh, stools that is nothing but the ibs according to ayurveda so in all these diseases there is involvement of agni and ama so generally we can say these diseases are occurring as a result of loss of agni or hampered agni so ultimately whenever that agni is you know lost there may be uh, uh, not only the disease are occurring general nourishment is lost general metabolism is lost normal formation of the tissues are not there or normal functioning of the bodily tissues are not there so this is uh, what uh, it is going to occur as a part of the agni mandi or any hampering uh, is happening to the agni so how we have to treat so before going to the treatment one more thing i would like to say is generally uh, many people 
beliefs about ayurveda that ayurveda is nothing but oil massage or just oil massage like we have like abhyangam pirichil or again uh, uh, such a different oil treatments are there in ayurveda that is uh, in a whole and soul about ayurveda according to some people they just some general public they believe like that but it is not like uh, it is not only ayurveda uh, you know in ayurveda we have different other types of therapy so generally we can divide this ayurvedic therapy into two types that is brahmana and langhana so this uh, again langhana can be uh, called as a reduction therapy and brahmana is nothing but the nourishment therapy so all you are this you know oil massage pirichil everything are coming under the nourishment therapy that is in order to nourish your body this we are doing the uh, oil therapy so that uh, Uh, therapies where you, we use the oils but here another thing is we can't go for the nourishment therapies whenever agni mandi is there if agni is not good then you are not your body is not going to get digested that is again uh, if you are using all these you know uh, oils or oil massage or internally if you are giving some grata or ghee for intake the if agni is not good agni is not you know in a uh, good level then these therapies are not going to work they will not work because they uh, already our metabolism is hampered so in order to have the best result of these therapies we need to have a good agni so whenever agni mandi is there our line of treatment is a reduction therapy that is nothing but the um, uh, langana therapy or the reduction therapy so ultimately we need to go for the langana therapy for example if agni mandi is very less so langana again we have different types are there so i am going to ex- explain it in practical uh, words that is if uh, agni is agni mandi is very mild or if very mild ama is formed then only fasting is the treatment so you need to you skip a meal then no so you are in normal see if agni is good you are not allowed to skip the meal you have to have the meal at normal time but if your agni is not good you are not feeling hungry your digestion is not good you are having indigestion then skip a meal that is fasting that is also known as upavasa in ayurveda it is known as langana in ayurveda langana or upavasa and agni mandi is little higher level that is not no, no very uh, mild but not too high also it is a moderate level loss of agni is in a moderate moderate level not a proper agni loss of agni is in a moderate level and ama is also formed that is in a moderate level then only fasting may not help so along with fasting you have to go for some medicines also just like you know warm water it is hot water so you do you do do the fat fasting fasting and you skip a meal or take very light food and again you can take warm water or take some medicine along with that there is again uh, like different we have like the chitragadi vadi is there panchagola fanta different types of such agni increasing medicines are there so take such medicine that will do the ama pachana it will digest the ama and agni mandi is very severe complete loss of agni is there a uh, very severe loss of agni is there and ama is very much in the sharira then you have to go for first you have to do the fasting along with that you have to do the medicines to digest the ama you have, you have to give medicines for increasing the agni then you have to eliminate the doshas from the sharira after giving the fasting after giving the you know medicines to digest the ama then the doshas whatever like vada pitta kapha different other morbidities in the sharira or any other uh, you know malas in uh, waste in the sharira that should be eliminated so this is the based on the different level of agni you have to treat the um, uh, in these three manners that is the first one is a fasting or langana therapy then langana plus langana pachana that is a langana fasting and medicines to digest the ama then fasting digestive medicines and elimination therapy so this is the basic treatment of agni mandi and ama so again uh, best example uh, with a disease example i will tell that is a uh, you know in the case of fever for example so this may be more clear to us for example if a person having fever acute fever he may have the, along with bodily temperature will rise because i already told there is uh, you know agni mandi is there that is uh, agni is reduced ama is formed that ama is deposited in the channels which carry the sweat and there is obstruction in that sweat carrying channels sweat is not coming out perspiration is not sweating is not occurring so increased temperature will be there this is what happening in the fever so how to treat it treat, treat this thing again if you are treating for example as per modern medicine generally if you get a fever you will take some paracetamol fever will come down right 
but as per ayurveda you should not take such treatments because there you are take, uh, treating only your temperature if you are treating only tem- because uh, if your temperature or if you are treating tem- only temperature what happens is this temperature is uh, raised because of many other reasons starting from the agni mandya from the ama from the deposition of ama in the set channels so different other mechanisms are there but ultimately you are treating by giving the paracetamol you are reducing the temperature only but all these basic things are inside the sharira agni is not corrected ama is not digested obstruction is not cleared sweating is not occurring so by giving the uh, you know paracetamol you can't do all these works paracetamol is an you know, anti pyretic drug which will reduce the temperature so as per ayurveda how you have a treatment is to do the treatment is first thing is the langana Red, you know do a fasting or take very le- little uh, legu ahar light food then what happens is that agni will get increased or whatever ama is formed that will get digested and again do the swedana swedana means langanam swedanam these two things are very much important in uh, fever treatment of fever swedana is nothing but the some sudation therapy sudation means again swedana is nothing but ultimately you are improving the sweating okay or you are facilitating the sweating how you can facilitate the sweating means you cover your sharira with some you know this uh, you know uh, like you know some blankets like woolen blankets or again this kambli will tell so you cover your you know body with that so that your body will get a uh, will get a heat within the sharira so that the sweat glands will be cleared sweating will occur so you, so generally our you know aged people used to tell like when you have a fever you have to get sweat then only that fever will come down that is as a part of fever you should get the sweating or you have to induce sweating how to induce sweating you can't go for all this you know swedana like in you know, different types of sudation mechanism in ayurveda because already temperature is high so the minimum thing what you can do is cover your body with a blanket tight blanket so that you will get the sweating or you don't go go and sit under an ac or fan when you have the fever because you will not get the sweating go to a another place where there is no fan or no ac and cover your body with a thick blanket so that you will get the sweating so you correct the agni with the langana correct the agni with the ushna jala drink some hot water moderate hot water or do a fasting so that agni will be corrected the obstruction the sweat glands will be removed and ultimately if you do the you know sweating uh, that is a um, by you know covering your body with a tight uh, blanket sweating will also occur so by this you are not just treating the temperature here we are treating the agni here we are treating the ama here we are treating the sweat here or the we are inducing the sweating here so that we are treating the uh, fever from its root not from the top top means by giving a paracetamol you are do, you know treating the external fever that is the temperature only but as per ayurveda you are treating the agni so by treating the agni what happens is again from the root you can remove the doshas and you can cure the disease completely so i had an example you know I, the, by this i you know come to the, uh, the end so last i was taking the practical class for my students final year students where i was explaining about this fever so they have taken a fever case, you know their own uh, friends case that is a fever case so the presenter presented everything so we have completed the class and at the end of the class the student came to me and she asked me sir i also had the fever and my friend also had the fever so my friend did not take any medication she she did not take any you know paracetamol she did not take any you know this uh, what is that uh, um any uh, this uh, antibiotics she has taken very little very you know mild ayurvedic drugs and she followed the uh, pathya she went took a very light food one meal she, she you know skipped that is again she you know did the langana or fasting she did and she got the uh, f- fever got reduced and but i had the fever i have taken the paracetamol i have taken antibiotic also but i also got uh, you know relieved from the fever so how this happens both even without taking uh, medicine also she the other person got fever, you know reduction in the fever i also got the reduction in the fever then i told that student how can you say that your paracetamol worked in your case or the antibiotic worked in your case because you also followed up langana you also did not take much food you also skipped a meal you also took the ayurvedic measures also so it is not your paracetamol work there paracetamol might have reduced temperature but the fever from its root was taken uh, you know uh, 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 fever from the root was 
treated by our ayurvedic measures the fasting helped you in treating that fever or in treating uh, correcting the agni or the you know lagu ahara light food helped you or the ayurvedic medication helped you not the antibiotic because without doing the blood test without knowing the esr or any other you know, infection level no need to take any antibiotic this much is sufficient this much very minimal treatment is sufficient in order to treat your fever because it is originating from the agni only or the agni mandya so coming to the end of this presentation where simple remedies to counteract the agni mandya or ama first thing is a drinking hot water not always like you know too hot okay like, we'll tell you uh, know little sometimes you can take the boiled and cooled water also but it's always to uh, better to take a boiled water in a uh, you know this uh, very you know moderate level boiled water can be taken that is a uh, or moderate uh, hot water can be taken and again fasting fasting when it is advised means whenever you are having the indigestion not generally if you are normally uh, you know like like you know our elders or you know they have used to take the ekadashi you know vrata or fasting and all so that is again periodically not always that is again advised that is again always good to improve the agni but if you are having indigestion you can do the fasting so that the agni will be corrected and again taking light food so this is also a type of fat fasting that is a taking very light food for example if your digestion is not good don't go for any uh, larger meals like biryani or normal rice and different with different curries take ganji that is uh, take ganji ganji means less quantity of rice more quantity of water or take some pongal pongal with all the seasonings like uh, pepper all those things or you know garlic and or, or ginger so that is that may help you uh, so these are again light foods so you can dig like light, light foods when you have or simple anna and rasam or annam and rasam that's again rice and rasam rasam is also having so many digestive drugs are there like pepper is there uh, garlic is there ginger is there all and again rasam itself is a simple preparation so that that will improve our agni and again seasoning of food with the carminative drug that is again as i told so whatever food you are making you try if you are having the you know in digestion you add more pepper to that more pepper means not in a large quantity little more than the normal pepper or again this ginger can be added all these are again very good you know commonly available or beautiful drugs that we have in our own kitchen like this pepper garlic or you know this uh, again other spices so you can add little more or you can season all the foods with such a, um uh, uh kind of you know this uh, like uh, carminative drugs okay and again follow the regular food timings this is very much important like many people will get this and gastritic patients will be there where they will have the chest burning sensation or stomach burning sensation will be there because they have the habit of skipping the meal or delaying the meal so if you are getting regular timings means when you are getting the hunger when you feel hungry that time you take the food don't delay the food don't take the food before getting the hunger or in all the three meals follow this thing that is a regular timings of food and avoid day sleep so if you have the food in the lunch you know good lunch and if you are sleeping in the afternoon then the proper digestion is not going to occur so in order to for, because whenever you are having a heavy meal in the afternoon you have to have some minimal or mild moderate um, you know uh, bodily activities in order to get the proper digestion but instead of that if you are taking the food immediately after the, that if you are going to sleep then there also there can be you know there can be you no know, acne derangement can occur or diseases can occur and again next is the avoid you know unnecessary or long term medications if you are taking some for example some people have the habit of taking paracetamol simply if you get slight increase in the body temperature immediately they'll take the paracetamol dollar 650 or again gastritis immediately they only go to the uh, medical shop and they'll take the randac tablet or the you know and you know antacid tablets they'll take so unnecessarily don't take any other medication or long term medication how many days it may be allopathy or ayurvedic medication also but how many days the doctor prescribes that that day only that much days you take the medication don't go for over medication or long term medication without prescription and again regular physical exercise so this can also help your uh, agni uh, to nourish the body or to help to improve your agni or to maintain your agni okay so these are the simple remedies to counteract the agni mandya or to keep your agni in a normal state so by this i would like to end my presentation uh, thank you thank you doctor that was a wonderful presentation uh, 
you can stop uh, sharing the screen and come uh, on uh, i mean on video we can go into the uh, question answer session if that is okay with you doctor sure sure yeah uh, so actually, I'm having uh, hmm. some uh, you know, electricity problem. My current has gone, so I'll okay, okay. No be in the no audio. Issue. So, uh, is it going to be trouble? Uh, you have power, right? In the yeah, yeah, I have power. There is no problem. But for uh, light, is not there. That's why I'm not coming. No to issue. No issue. Video. So, uh, the first question is how we will understand prasanna at, uh, atma in healthy individual. This is a question put forward by Dr. Vishnu CP. Okay, okay. So, Prasanna, so as I already told, we have this Ayurvedic concept rather. Uh, regarding Agni, I already told that is we can't see the Agni. We can't see the Agni uh, in a person. We can't do the, we cannot do the uh, surgery and see the Agni. But, so, so like uh, everything is by the expression, how the our body expresses it. For example, uh, in the case of Agni, uh, we are feeling the hunger at the correct time. You are feeling to, you know, you are desirous to have the food at proper time. Then we can understand that our Agni is good. So likewise, in the case of Prasanna, Atma, Indriya, that is again nothing but the Prasanna that means the pleasure or the normalcy of uh, all these, you know, uh, this mind or sense organs, then our soul itself. So how we can understand is uh, regarding the mind, we you know generally we are, you know, when, uh, uh, maybe uh, quite of, uh, all, almost all the time we are feeling really happy, uh, really, you know, this... Uh, we don't have any grief. We don't have any angry. So there are some manasika like loba, moha, irshya, krodha. That is again, we don't have, we are not over desirous. We are not over angry. We are not over sad or we are not, you know, uh, jealous to the other people. So if we, if a person is not having these things, then we can understand that our mind is in a normalcy. And regarding the indriyas, that is again, uh, the sense organs. We are not much addicted to the sense organs. Like, we can have some control over our sense organs. For example, regarding the food intake, regarding the tongue asana indriya, rasana indriya or the tongue. So if you have a control over your uh, tongue, uh, you may not be desirous to have more food. Whatever food you like, though you like also, you will have it in a limited quantity, not over. And your eyes, if you have control over the eyes, you may not be you know, more bright, you will feel like seeing more bright things or more, you know, like for example, movies and all. So we, but we'll have a control over that. We'll restrict ourselves from, you know, having the vision and such a bright vision or, you know, sort of uh, over, you know, enthusiastic. We will not be over enthusiastic to see the uh, such things, so more visions. So that means ultimately the prasanada of our indriya or the, you know, uh, sense organs is to have the control over that and to have the clear, you know. So by doing this, we can prevent the disorders regarding, you know, related to that particular indriyas so that our indriyas will also fu uh, function very good for example uh, regarding the eye as an indriya if you are if you don't have the control over your indriya or the over your eyes you will be exposed to so much bright visions or bright you know visuals and all ultimately that will affect our vision so that that prasanna of indriya will eye will be lost so in that manner whatever prasanna of indriya mana or our ultimately or again, regarding the soul means it is again ultimate happiness of the soul. So if you are control, having the control over the manas as well as the indriyas, you will get a happy soul. Your soul will be happy. Totally, you will be happy. So this is how we can understand. We can we don't have any other measures to measure the prasanna of this indriya, atma, mana and all. But by this normal, your normal functioning of these things, we can understand the prasanna. Thank you, doctor. The next question is, I want to understand belching. What is this happening? Is this because of mandagni? What is the physiology? How can we correct belching problem? So in belching, again, uh, before going to the belching as a pathology or a negative thing, ultimately, first thing is the belching is a normal process also. As per Ayurveda, you should get belching. After taking the belching, the first thing is Udgara Shuddhi Rutsaho. Udgara Shuddhi. Udgara is nothing but the belching in Ayurveda. So after taking a food, after the proper digestion, you should get the clear belching. So belching can be different types. Clear and non-clear belching can be there. Clear belching after the digestion is quite normal or you should get that belching. That is very much normal. But if you get the, your belching is not clear, sometimes after food uh, ingestion or food taking the food, you will get sour belching. Sour belching means uh, some sour taste in the mouth can be there. So that is an, that's an abnormal thing. So if the belching is not clear, 
and if you have symptoms like gastritis like chest burning is there sour belching is there that is a diseased part a disease uh, as, a, as a symptom of disease another thing is again while belching you will get the smell of the food which what you have already taken that is because of the indigestion so so belching normally clear belching if it is there that is well and good after the digestion but before getting the digestion so generally as per ayurveda digestion takes 3 hours 3 hours is the time for digestion so you are not before the normal digestion if you are getting the even though it is clear belching or again belching with some smell uh, that is the smell of the food what you have taken that is abnormal so this is again ultimately here you have to correct the agni by following so what the last slide whatever i have told like following the you know drinking the hot water or following the regular food timings and if you are, uh, and again uh, the you know, doing the fasting whenever it is required and uh, avoiding the day sleep avoiding the excessive you know cold food or the heavy food so by these simple methods we can uh, treat the belching or we can prevent the belching also but if it goes beyond a stage where it is since a chronic so many years the person is having belching like clear or non clear belching or sour belching then we need to consult a doctor so that the doctor will prescribe along with this diets and uh, lifestyle modification he'll prescribe some simple medications so that the belching can be cleared so ultimately belching is an expression just an expression but the cause for belching is a disease it may be some gastritis or it can be indigestion also so that is the thing which we need to understand so if it is a chronic belching or belching since so many years you are this you know just this lifestyle modification may not work there you have to take some medications also thank you sir so uh, there is a question which came up in a direct message sir can you please elaborate bhutagni concept in relation to our sharira and roga utpatti so bhutagni uh, bhutagni is again generally uh, again uh, it is again uh, concerned uh, you know, comparing to the jadaragni as well as the uh, there is a you know uh, uh, koshtagni and the uh, like uh, dhatuagni bhutagni is something is not completely uh and you know, within the sharira it it has some uh, um, uh, external factors also that is again we have uh, as per ayurveda we have uh, no, pancha, uh, not not only as per ayurveda no, as per hindu you know uh, this you know, tradition or the mythology we have five panja bhuda sarda akasha vayu agni jala prithvi these panja bhuda sarda so that is generally seen in the universe like you have you can see the water you can see the earth you can see the i uh, know uh, uh, there is wind is there there is as a uh, vata or again uh, the different types of you know this uh, or akasha you can akasha nothing but space that you can see so these are the uh, panja mahabhudas in the universe so this, these things are having the you know expression in our sharira also so as per ayurveda our sharira our body is a you know representation or the minute structure of the whole universe whatever in the universe uh, whatever things in the universe similar things are there in the sharira also so uh, you know this akasha or the panja mahabhudas are there like you know water content in our sharira or different tissues which are having the water content for example blood is having water fat is having water or muscle is having water so whatever water content in the sharira that is again similar to the you know uh, mahabhuda jala mahabhuda or the agni mahabhuda that is so in the sharira agni mahabhuda is in the form of the digestive fire and again the prithvi mahabhuda that is in the earth so in the sharira it is in the form of the hard structures like in you know, a muscles or the bone so the which, which you know maintain sharira that is in the, in the form of the prithvi mahabhuda and again uh, the jala mahabhuda as i already told in the like water content in sharira so uh, directly we can't say whether how uh, it the action how it is but the similar way like uh, the bhutagni is nothing but the Uh, this uh, bu- uh, again it is not visible that but the bhuda jala jala mahabhuda agni may be acting more over the water content in the sharira or the prithvi mahabhuda agni that is will be acting over the more uh, more over the hard structures in the sharira agni mahabhuda is there and the agni of that particular thing is acting over the jala agni or the on the digestive fire so likewise the direct expression because bhuta panja mahabhuda its expressions cannot be seen directly by us but so likewise in the sharira also their action may be explained based on the digestion of or the formation or the nourishment of different uh, you know this uh, structures in the sharira like uh, jala there's uh, like fat muscle or uh, blood so in that manner we can explain uh, but we cannot directly see the mechanism of bhuta agni uh, in the sharira so the 
Buddha, Panjamahabuddha, and it is having a similar expression in the Sharira in the form of the Jala, that is in the water content in the Sharira, or in the digestive fire, or in the hard structures, or in the hollow spaces, that is Akasha Mahabuddha. So, in that particular location or in that particular organ, whatever digestive or the metabolic activity is happening, that will be uh, in that metabolic activity, there will be a role of Bhudakni also. Unmute Girish. For everybody's reference, there is the feedback form link which is given in the uh, chat box. Kindly fill in the feed, uh, feedback uh, uh, form. Uh, it will be shared again. Yeah, so the feedback link is shared again. Uh, moving on to the next uh, question. Sir, as you said, Jwara occurs due to Agnimandya and Rasadhatu Dushti. So in Agantuja Jwara condition also, some concept in uh, concept is applicable and how agantuja factor will deteriorate uh, deteriorate patient, patient's agni and produce jwara okay so agantuja so as a name itself agantuja is something is externally from the uh, sharira that's external to the sharira so uh, as per uh, no, generally we know as per the shatkriya kala in ayurveda another concept which is told so that is again shat, uh, there is a stage called as chaya first stage is as chaya Dosha chaya. That's an accumulation of dosha in the sharia. That is in the chaya avastha. But as per, generally, uh, there is some chaya is again. Uh, next stage is the prakopa. Prakopa is again the aggravation of the uh, dosha. So as per, uh, so in the, uh, uh, the prakopa stage, if it can be of two times. Chaya purvaka prakopa and achaya purvaka prakopa. So uh, this uh, achaya purvaka prakopa mainly occurs in the aganduja vyadis where Direct prokopa can be there. There is no need of dosha accumulation in the sharira. Directly, it will go to the aggravation stage. So, likewise, in the agantuja uh, conditions also, agni may not be. Uh, many most of the times, agni may not be affected because it starts from the nidana sevana, like the sharirika nidana sevana, and along with the manasi nidana sevana, there can be more affection of agni, more hamperment of the agni can occur because of sharirika as well as manasi nidana. But Agandhuja Nidanas are not always affecting the Agni. So in Agandhuja Jwara, like, you know, external, the Jwara which is caused by the external factors, that may not be, you know, always, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can't, uh, we cannot say that there is involvement of Agni or uh, there is, you know, role of Agni Mandya. So Agandhuja Jwara, uh, again, uh, but sometimes if any, along with the Agandhuja Nidanas, if the person is having Shariri and Nidanas also, there can be Agni Mandya and there can be role of Agni. But in the case of Agantuja Jwara, Jwara is you know, uh, seen as an expression as the temperature is increased, but there may not be a role of Agni Mandya in Agantuja Jwara, as per my understanding. Uh, but, uh, and again, Agantuja factor that can uh, deteriorate the person's Agni, that is also, uh, we, can, we, can, we don't have much reference of that because whatever Agni Mandi Nidanas we already explained, that is mainly again Shaririga Nidanas as well as Manasik Nidanas. Agandhuja Nidanas are not directly told because it is causing the Achaya Purvaka Prakopa. Dosha Chaya is not occurring. So that, uh, so, so that it may not affect the Agni directly. That is my understanding. And again, another question from the same person is again the, uh, regarding the uh, Tikshna Agni. Uh, that is again if in three types of agni we can say that is bishamagni and mandagni occurs due to ama so here i would like to say is it is not because of ama ama is not going to cause the agni mandya agni, from agni mandya ama is going to occur so this can be see, uh, easily understood in a better way that is again from agni mandya there will be ajirna so ajirna generally can be classified into three that is again the uh, this uh, you know Based on the doshas, that is again vata, pitta, and kapha can affect, you know, uh, have some role over the ajirna, and that will produce the ama, vishtabda, and vidagda ajirna. So here again, how these diseases are occurring, that we can, uh, for example, like uh, if kapha is acting over the uh, uh, ajirna, that will produce the ama first, or the ama ajirna first. From ama, ama ajirna again, it can lead to the ama formation. And again, if you go over the Vidagda Avas, that is Pitta is acting over that, then there will be complete burning of the Ajirna will be there. Not digestion, burning will be there. So that there will be formation of Vidaha, 
Vidagda Ajirna and then there will be formation of Amla Pitta. So Amla Pitta there is, this, this is occurring from the Vidagda Ajirna. Vidagda Ajirna is nothing but the Pura Rupa stage of uh, uh, Amla Pitta. There will be, uh, so because the Pitta turns into Amla Bhava, that is Amla Rasa formation will be there. That is nothing but the reason for the sour belching. And again, Tikshnagni means, so Tikshnagni is already told it is caused by the Pitta. So here you have to understand the thing is, the Vidagda Ajirna and the Tikshnagni are not the same. See, for that again, Agni, if Agni is Tikshna, again, it is not, no, Ajirna cannot occur there. Ajirna will not occur because completely it will be burned. That is again, that we have a disease called as Atyagni or Bhasmaga Raga, which is explained by Charaka in uh, Chikil Sasana 15th chapter. So that is, uh, so that is entirely different and uh, Vidagda Ajirna is different uh, uh, from each other because Tikshna Agni will, uh, so in, uh, uh, will not cause the indigestion. But if indigestion is occurred because of the manda agni and among, above that, if pitta is acting, because uh, whenever manda agni is there, ajirna is there, so it is again, I uh, know that uh, uh, agni is not good first. So from that again, there can be uh, this uh, tikshna agni and it will, if that tikshna agni, sorry, uh, the pitta will be acting over the uh, manda agni or the ajirna, then uh, without the ajirna will be occurring. But it is not similar to the tikshna agni. Tikshna agni is something about the Hypermetabolism, where we uh, we can have uh, uh, increased metabolism, and that will complete digestion will be there. So, like for example, you can correlate with the hyper hyperthyroidism, where the uh, immediate uh, digestion and increased appetite will be there. So that is the uh, thing about Tikshna Agni, and these uh, things cannot be explained in a, uh, uh, much detail in such a presentation where we have to because if you're talking start, starting talking about Agni. Uh, again, just a single class may not be sufficient for that. But uh, if you are reading the commentaries from Charaka Samhita and all, that will be very much helpful to you so that you can understand the Stikshna Agni uh, or again Manda Agni or again Ajirna, uh, Amla Pita, everything in a different you know, detail manner we can understand. And another question is uh, Abhigada also person may get Jora. So this is also again similar to the uh, and again, it is also uh, similar to uh, Agandhu Jivara and Agandhu because Abhigada or Shata, all this uh, again are coming under the uh, you know, Agandhu Janidaras. So there also again, uh, chaya, chaya, Dosha Chaya is not going to occur because uh, in Abhigada, uh, the thing that you can... Uh, 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 Dr. Yadu, uh, Dr. Yadu uh, because of type, uh, time constraints, I would select the questions for you. We will not take all the questions. Uh, because think, uh, uh, not everybody would be sitting. This is the last sitting. question, I think, right? Uh, no other questions. Yeah, yeah. There. Yes, uh, there are a few, but yeah, please continue. Uh, because uh, this is the thing which is mini uh, visible to you, so I'll uh, uh, end with this. Okay. Hmm. Uh, so that's Abhigata is the reason where, again, first there will be Vata Prakopa and Pitta Prakopa will be there because there is something called as Chata Ushma. Whenever an injury occurs to our Sharira, that will produce a type of heat in the Sharira. Due to that, there will be Pitta Prakopa, and that can be expressed as fever also. But this is not uh, no, related to the Agni Mandya or Abhigada is not directly causing any Agni Mandya or derangement of the, of the Agni. So the Jwara, which is caused by the Abhigada, may be because of the Shata Ushma or the Abhigada Ushma or the heat produced in the Sharira as a result of the uh, injury or Abhigada. Yes, sir. So the, these were questions from one person. There were some other questions from other persons as well. But uh, sure, that sure. is okay. There was a question about uh, uh, curd rice practice, consumption of curd, uh, as well as uh, is pongal uh, really good for the body? So these were questions. Uh, 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 can you answer those two? Sure, sure, sure. So curd, mm -hmm. as per Ayurveda, again, it is uh, so different preparations of curd are told in Ayurveda, and they are having their own habits also. But the curd is not advised whenever Agni Mandi is there because curd, and again, two things you can uh, consider this, curd and buttermilk. So if a curd is completely churned, it will turn into buttermilk. Buttermilk is, milk is said to be the one of the most, uh, you know, or the one of the very important or very beneficial thing to our Sharira. But curd is not always like that. Curd is something which is a thick thing. It is heavy for digestion. It is cold in nature, or it is, you know, heavy in nature. Or it is again, you know, sour in nature. So that may produce. If, you know, if you know, the person is taking curd in whenever the appetite is not good, that is going to produce some diseases. But if you take buttermilk instead of that, whenever uh, agni is, if it is less so also, buttermilk will help you in digestion. So compared to the curd, buttermilk is very good. 
and if your agni is good if your digestion is uh, you know good and if you, you know if you are able to digest the food is normal time then curd can also be taken but and again one more thing is curd is not advised in the night time as per ayurveda because during night again our metabolism normally will be less not as a disease it will be less in the night time so during night curd is not advised and another is pongal is pongal so yeah. very good for the body yes is pongal is a preparation which will be having you know though it is a rice preparation it is seasoned with so many condiments and spices like this pepper large quantity of pepper is there ginger is there so generally it is one among the light food though it is a rice preparation among the ri other rice preparation it is a lightest food because it is having the deepana dravya you know you know this uh, carminative drugs are there like uh, this uh, seasonings are there so pongal is obviously is a good among the other rice preparations okay what is your opinion on the two meals day concept uh, in many communities in the world two meals concept as per ayurveda also in every ayurvedic books or the ancient textbooks if you read uh, you know the there is only mentioning of two meals uh, morning a meal and a evening a meal so that was sufficient for the people in that times so it was one of the ancient concepts but right now all some people are you know um, having such uh, practice but our problem is we are habituated or we are habituated to the three meal system where we used to have the food because generally we are from the you know childhood itself we are uh, or even from the you know uh, child uh, that's from the childhood itself we are you know an accustomed to the three meal system but if a person start suddenly stops a meal especially in the, if you are you know as per ayurveda only two meals morning and evening meal was there but if uh, the we are again skipping the lunch it may produce some diseases we may get the gastritis because we are not accustomed to such a type of food habit so that uh, i strong if a person is habitually since childhood if the person is having the habit of taking two meals that will uh, be you know maybe beneficial to him or he may not have some diseases to that because of that practice but if a person having the three meal system suddenly shift to the two meal system that will obviously produce a disease like start, starting from the simple gastritis in digestion there can be some other complications also so i don't suggest a person to take you know skip from the three meal system to the two meal system thank you doctor so there is another point tradition says that you have to take a short walk after dinner it also says you should take rest after the afternoon meal is there contradiction or is it because olden days had a lot of people had a lot of physical work during the days and people needed rest after some hard work uh so regarding this again uh, so as per ayurveda the thing, thing is told is after food don't take uh, no uh, we should not be sedentary because the sedentary in the sense you should not be simply sitting there so resting in the rest is also we are taking for a very less time we are not you know, continuous uh, continuously doing the rest so immediately after that again we are going for the physical activities only so the day sleep is contraindicated rest can be taken after taking the food we can rest for some time or you can go for a so, small walk also that is also ad, uh, no, advised so two things are contraindicated immediately after food you should not go for sleep or you should not rest for a long time and immediately after food we should not go for heavy strenuous activity so for that purpose a minimal rest is needed after that again you can continue with the regular activities so that is uh, the concept in ayurveda thank you doctor so uh, there is a comment from our md uh, mr tvs barrier excellent presentation good information for daily living thank you doctor for sparing time uh, for ashtanga there are other comments thank as you, well thank like you from inform informative session uh, thank you excellent presentation so such comments are also coming up uh, um, with that i'd like to uh, okay there is a question ayurvedic medicines beneficial for diabetic patients interesting okay yes yes <laughs> so that question is again diabetes is one of the disease that cannot be completely cured if a person is getting the label of being diabetic it is not complete it cannot be completely cured so many people come with the complete cure of diabetes but we cannot trust them completely especially this you know folklore practice and also ayurvedic medicines are very helpful in diabetes because it helps in uh, keeping the blood sugar level in a normalcy many a times many people we have seen like they are regularly taking the ayurvedic medication so that they don't need to go for any insulin or any other anti diabetic drugs so ayurvedic medicines are there not just medicines obviously in diabetes again this lifestyle modifications food change in food habits diet following are also very much important not just the medication so if you are following these 
uh, along with the ayurvedic medication these things are also again followed obviously we can have a control over the blood sugar thank you doctor with that i'd like to add something here about uh, diabetic medicines in ayurveda uh, see diabetes is a condition it is not a I disease so you it is uh, hello can you hear me yes sir yes yeah so diabetes uh, when when diabetes is uh, uh, coming up as a point, uh, uh, I'd like to add that uh, diabetes is a condition, not a disease. So uh, there is uh, nothing called, uh, uh, there is no word called cure for that. So rather it is uh, because the body is used to a particular condition, these changes happen. And there are patients who have completely reversed the situation in their body rather than reversing diabetes. So there are people who are not on medication who have done very good lifestyle changes and they are maintaining the blood sugar levels and uh, uh, living through uh, with the right kind of advice given through, for their uh, daily regimen, their foods as well as uh, their exercises. Uh, it is very much possible that it can be maintained under very good control. So uh, that is what Ayurveda has taught us. And uh, I think that is what is true reversal uh, means. So we have quite good results with Ayurveda there. So. Um, there is also a point about a question about proprietary medicine, uh, difference between proprietary Ayurvedic medicines and herbal uh, uh, remedies, uh, difference between patent pro pro proprietary Ayurvedic medicines and herbal remedies. Uh, uh, I would like to ask uh, our executive director, uh, Mr. T.R. Shashi Varier, to kindly give a comment on that. Yeah, hello everyone. The question is very interesting. Uh, proprietary versus classical or... Uh, there is no, uh, I wouldn't say that a proprietary, a, a patent product is good or the proprietary product is better than the classical, or I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, what I want to say here is that a proprietary, a patent product is born out of a proprietary knowledge. That is a person who brings out a proprietary pro patent, patent product has immense knowledge about the, the classical part or the patent, uh, sorry, uh, the generic pro pro uh, product and the Dravyaguna. Otherwise, he will not be able to bring out a patent product which is as efficient. So I think the, the uh, classical product as well as the patent product are as good. Uh, all we have to do is go through the, uh, the Dravyaguna of uh, the on the, the, that is the stand the Dravyaguna and then go ahead and use the product. So both the products are good uh, uh, if you really follow the product well. With that, we have come to the uh, end of the session, Dr. Yadu. I think the questions have uh, closed up. Uh, so with that, uh, I would ask our uh, MD, Mr. Uh, 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 one second. I'll just check if he's... No, he's not there. Okay. Yeah, that's why I just found out he's not there. So uh, I would also like to ask uh, our uh, uh, medical superintendent, Dr. TVN Warrior, to give a few comments. He's also not there. He's left. Okay. Okay. Fine. So uh, uh, I ask uh, Mr. T.R. Shashi Warrior to give a few comments on the session. Uh, all right. All right. Uh, Dr. Go, uh, Dr. Yadu, uh, it has been a wonderful session. You have given uh, a lot of points for... Uh, daily living and that is very important. Uh, I felt that it was a little too technical for the layman, but then otherwise it was a wonderful presentation with all those explanations. Agni is a very broad topic, I understand. You cannot cover Agni in just one uh, lecture uh, and uh, so you will take, I think uh, uh, according to me, you can probably break this into three different uh, topics and then come out with uh, you know, uh, bringing out your expressions on this. So it was it was lovely going through this uh, session, and uh, I understand that uh, uh, many of the people have left. But then I I think whoever were there in the session would have definitely enjoyed what you have just given. I I think all of them had been through uh, the, throughout the session. They were there, and after the uh, uh, yes. question and session yes, no, question no. answer session uh, started up, only then people have left. So it was yes, a very yes. captivating session. We could see that with the number of uh, participants there. Uh, uh, it was a wonderful session, Dr. Yadu. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'd like to thank uh, all the coordinators for giving me an opportunity. 
so it was my first uh, you know session to a common public so i could not uh, make it uh, it was really uh, like it was, i also felt like it was very much uh, technical i'll try to improve it uh, no actually doctor you do the session was all right when once the question answer session started up uh, 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 the excitement yeah, in the question was started that, uh, person was from ayurvedic side so it was yeah, again yeah. Uh, so i had to uh, explain it uh, in ayurvedic terms <laughs> yeah anyways so it went wonderfully i was having uh, i got a few good uh, ideas uh, when uh, after listening to what you had to say on agni uh, we are uh, going to uh, invite you again for a certain few other uh, additional sessions dr yadu if that is okay with you sure Later. sure thank you thank you <laughs> thank okay. you sir so with that i'd like to thank everybody present here i want to also thank uh, mr vignesh without whom uh, the it support would not have happened uh, from e quadrica uh, mr vignesh thank you so much for being here and taking care of this whole session thank you thank you sir. thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. i'd like to thank everybody present here uh, for uh, taking your time and coming for our Ash ashtanga webinar series yet again we'll have another uh, session of ashtanga webinar series in the next month uh, last uh, sunday uh, i would invite you all to join up then also thank you so much have a great weekend thank you sir